Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Napoli, and today we're going to talk about how you can easily prevent potentially life-threatening side effects from cholesterol-lowering medication. Welcome to today's Napoli Nutrition Update. One of the most commonly prescribed medications or medication classes in the U.S. are cholesterol-lowering medications. Uh, we're talking about the statin drugs specifically, things like Lipitor, uh, Zocor, Crestor. And they're prescribed at that rate because they work. They effectively lower cholesterol. That's what they're prescribed to do, and that's what they do. However, if your ultimate goal is heart health, we have a potentially big problem here. Cholesterol-lowering meds, the statins, work by lowering an enzyme in the liver called HMG-CoA reductase. That's part of the chemical reaction that your liver uses to produce cholesterol. So if you block that enzyme, the, 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 that chemical reaction stops or slows down significantly, and you don't make cholesterol. So it works very well at doing that. Unfortunately, the problem comes in in that that enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, is also part of the chemical reaction that your body uses to produce a vitamin-like substance called CoQ10, or coenzyme Q10, in your body. Um, by, by blocking that enzyme, CoQ10 production can drop as much as 40%. And why is that significant? CoQ10 is needed to produce, in virtually every cell in your body, to produce energy. It's part of the energy production cycle. When we analyze the body, it's found in the highest concentration in the heart muscle. If CoQ10 levels drop, first of all, energy levels drop, uh, but more, uh, more troubling, is the fact that if the heart is deprived of CoQ10, you can develop cardiomyopathy or congestive heart failure, which is where the heart literally weakens to the point where it can't, can't function anymore. Fluid builds up in the lungs and, and the legs. Uh, we used to only see that in very, very elderly people, um, people on their deathbed, all right, right before they died. Unfortunately, we're seeing it much more commonly now. It's on the rise. And uh, there are numerous studies that show that lowering CoQ10 level produces this. Uh, Merck, as a matter of fact, back in 1990, Merck, uh, their drug, I believe at the time was Mevacor, uh, applied to the uh, FDA to produce their version of the of a cluster of a statin together with CoQ10 in the same pill to address those side effects, and they were granted the patent, uh, but have never produced the product. I have no idea why. Um, so here's the thing. Some forward-looking cardiologists are starting to tell their patients that they need to take CoQ10 if they're on a statin drug, but unfortunately, it's far, far too few. So you need to take this upon yourself and take it. Um, the great thing about it is if you do this, you're completely blocking that side effect of the medication, and it does not impede the activity of the medication at all. And there are three main forms of... Uh, commercially available CoQ10. One is the an older form called ubiquinone. Um, it's available in a dry form, like a dry powder in a capsule. It's yellow. Um, it's not very well absorbed. So if you're taking that form, you need to take between 300 and 400 milligrams a day to effectively um, correct for the problem. It's also best to take that in a meal that has some fat, um, because fat helps to be absorbed better. The late, more recent version that's come available is called ubiquinol, with an O-L at the end. It's more absorbable, it's more active in the body, and it's available in one of two ways. Uh, usually in a soft gel, which is going to be absorbed better. Uh, the one that I had used in my office is combined with something called shilajit, which is actually a, a, an herb that helps it to be transported across the cell membranes better so we get bigger bang for your buck. It actually can take less. So the, the standard uh, ubiquinone, you can get away with, ubiquinol, I'm sorry, you can get away with taking about 200 milligrams a day, uh, whereas with the ubiquinol and the shilajit combined, you're going to be taking about 100 milligrams a day. So um, please don't skip this. This is not, really shouldn't be optional because of the potential side effect. And now the newer medications, the new statins are more potent and people are being kept on them longer and longer. So don't ignore this. All right, until next time, God bless, be well.